I didn't know you were awake. I swear. Why are you frightened? What happened? That's wrong, isn't it? I said the wrong thing. I don't think so. I beg your forgiveness and your blessing. I am but a humble servant. You are back in Haven, my lord. They say you saved us. The breach stopped growing, just like the mark on your hand. It's all anyone has talked about for the last three days. So you're saying they're happy with me? I'm only saying what I heard. I didn't mean anything by it. I'm certain Lady Cassandra would want to know you've wakened. She said, at once. And where is she? In the Chantry, with the Lord Chancellor. At once, she said. him. He stopped the breach from getting any bigger. I heard he was supposed to close it entirely. Still, it's more than anyone else has done. Demons would have had us otherwise. taken to Val Royo immediately, to be tried by whomever becomes divine. I do not believe he is guilty. The prisoner failed, Seeker. The breach is still in the sky. For all you know, he intended it this way. I do not believe that. That is not for you to decide. Your duty is to serve the Chantry. My duty is to serve the principles on which the Chantry was founded, Chancellor, as is yours. Chain him! I want him prepared for travel to the capital for trial. Disregard that and leave us. You walk a dangerous line, Seeker. The breach is stable, but it is still a threat. I will not ignore it. So I'm still a suspect, even after what we just did? You absolutely are. No, he is not. Someone was behind the explosion at the Conclave. Someone Most Holy did not expect. Perhaps they died with the others, or have allies who yet live. I am a suspect? You, and many others. But not the prisoner. I heard the voices in the temple. The Divine called to him for help. So his survival, that thing on his hand, all a coincidence. Providence. The Maker sent him to us in our darkest hour. Though all before me is shadow, it shall the Maker be my guide. We lost everything then. Out of nowhere, you came. The breach remains. And your mark is still our only hope of closing it. This is not for you to decide. You know what this is, Chancellor. A writ from the Divine, granting us the authority to act. As of this moment, I declare the Inquisition reborn. 
We will close the breach, we will find those responsible, and we will restore order with or without your approval. This is the Divine's directive. Rebuild the Inquisition of old. Find those who will stand against the chaos. We aren't ready. We have no leader, no numbers. And now, no Chantry support. But we have no choice. We must act now, with you at our side. What is the Inquisition of old, exactly? It preceded the Chantry. People who banded together to restore order in a world gone mad. After, they laid down their banner and formed the Templar Order, but the Templars have lost their way. We need those who can do what must be done, united under a single banner once more. But aren't you still part of the Chantry? <laughs> Is that what you see? The Chantry will take time to find a new Divine. And then it will wait for her direction. But we cannot wait. So many Grand Clerics died at the Conclave. No, we are on our own. Perhaps forever. You're trying to start a holy war. We are already at war. You are already involved. Its mark is upon you. As to whether the war is holy, that depends on what we discover. If you're truly trying to restore order... That is the plan. Help us fix this before it's too late. Does it trouble you? If it wasn't enough to close the breach, what use is it? You did everything we asked of you. And it still didn't work. What's important is that your mark is now stable, as is the breach. You've given us time, and Solas believes a second attempt might succeed, provided the mark has more power. The same level of power used to open the breach in the first place. 
That is not easy to come by. Couldn't that kind of power just make things worse? And <laughs> people call me a pessimist. May I present Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. Such as they are. We lost many soldiers in the valley, and I fear many more before this is through. This is Lady Josephine Montelier, our ambassador and chief diplomat. I've heard much. It's a pleasure to meet you at last. And of course, you know Sister Leliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spymaster. Yes. Tactfully put, Cassandra. That's an impressive bunch of titles. I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. <sighs> we need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. They still think I'm guilty. That is not the entirety of it any longer. Some are calling you the Herald of Andraste, and that frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy. And we, heretics, for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the Majors or Templars for help is currently out of the question. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the Temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading. Which we have not. The point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? I'm not sure how I should feel. <laughs> the Chantry has decided that for you, it seems. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. They aren't more concerned about the breach, the real threat. They do know it's a threat. They just don't think we can stop it. The Chantry is telling everyone you'll make it worse. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. She is not far and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. I'll see what she has to say. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. In the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. Have you had any trouble with them? Not at all. I will inform you if that changes.
to work? Let's see what we have. Let us begin. The Inquisition cannot remain a vessel. If you can't prove, it was founded on Justinia's orders. This is an inopportune time, Marquis. More of the faithful flock here each day. But allow me to introduce you to the brave soul who risked his life to slow the magic of the breach. Sir Trevelyan, may I present the Marquis Durelion, one of Divine Justinia's greatest supporters. And the rightful owner of Haven. House Durelion lent Justinia these lands for pilgrimage. This Inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denham, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelden. We were honored to lend its use to divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. Demons are pouring from the sky, and you're worried about land claims. Haven is the Durelion's rightful property. Has Empress Selene officially acknowledged your possession of Haven? I was unaware her Imperial Majesty had conferred with the Queen of Ferelden on this matter. The Empress... has not yet had the opportunity to do so. <sighs> we face a dark time, Your Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in fact, trust us to forge new alliances to the benefit of all, no matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montillier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. I'm so pleased the Marquis isn't tossing us out into the cold. His grace is only the first of many dignitaries we must contend with. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. And each visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. May I ask what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montillier. Thank you. Let us hope so. Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. Thank you. 
You're the Herald. Or, well, the one they're calling the Herald, anyway. I hope the Inquisition can restore order soon. I never really wanted to leave the Circle. My name is Maneve. I research demons and other creatures. Seeker, Pentagast, and I use what I find to help the soldiers fight them. You said Cassandra has you researching creatures. Yes. If you find anything interesting in your travels, I'd appreciate you bringing it to me. I may be able to find some weakness our soldiers can exploit when fighting various creatures. At the least, some materials are useful for making potions or gear for the Inquisition. Why did you decide to research dangerous creatures? I like the outdoors. The idea of the outdoors, anyway. When some monster is coming at you, glowing eyes and burning claws, it's terrifying. But once you know how it works, you can deal with it. It's just another part of the world. So much of this world is only frightening because we don't understand it. You said you were a mage? No, just an apprentice. I was never very good at magic. I've got just enough talent to be a danger to other people. But when the mages rebelled, people like me had nowhere to go. The Templars would have killed us. Luckily, Seeker Pentagast took me in. Along with the Tranquil, I was protecting. You said that you were keeping some of the Tranquils safe? Yes. The mages took some of them when my Circle rebelled. The rest were forgotten. Most Circle mages look down on the Tranquil. ...or try to pretend they don't exist. They don't have any emotions. They can barely take care of themselves. Can't defend themselves at all. It's a shame. I like them better than most people. That's an unusual statement. They're polite. They don't bother you if they don't need something. When they study, they have a focus no normal person could ever match. But the Templars, even some of the mages... ...mistreated them just because they could. The Tranquil never fought back. If not for that, I... I don't know. Doesn't really matter now. I'm surprised that even an apprentice mage wouldn't join the Rebellion. I don't like using magic to fight. I'm not good at it either. I like studying. I like performing rituals that helped us unlock the secrets of the Veil. I liked having the Templars around to keep us safe. Most Circle Mages I've met have a different opinion of the Templars. They have not lived my life. I was born into a Dalish clan. I lived there until my magic manifested. The Dalish cannot risk having too many mages in one clan. And I was one more than they could bear. They gave me a pack and sent me into the woods to find my own life. I was seven years old. No wonder you'd rather stay in the Circle. You had more than enough life outdoors. I stumbled into a village, starving and cold a few weeks later. I started using magic to scare predators away. The villagers saw me make fire in my fist. They were terrified and wanted to kill me. Templars saved me from them. They gave me food and clothes and took me to the circle. I've seen what life is like without the Templars and I want no part of it. I just want to study. I'll speak with you later. Thank you again for what you've brought back. When there was no earth, you were the earth. When there was nothing, you were... 